Hello there everyone, welcome back to James Redmond TV and I've started the day as I usually do. I woke up and I've done my little posts off my stream where I do the short term content. I usually post two. I thought today I'd do an alternate and I'd do two Redmond roundups and, 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 and the episodes earlier because I should be doing one later. If not, then you're still getting the stream. I've done one about Darwin Nunes. We touched on Darwin Nunes as we always do and, and, and I always get myself into shit with this. <laughs> I always get myself into slander because um, I think it's a mixture of me trying to make a point and then a mixture of me trying to be a wind up and I go a little bit, maybe too far, because, not too far in what I'm trying to say. I agree on what I'm trying to say about Darwin Nunes and if you don't know my stance, I'd suggest you watch the video I posted earlier. Um, but that being said, this video is to talk about a slightly different option, mainly the attack as a whole, mainly on how you'd like to see the attack line up, um, as I believe we're forgetting about certain options when we come to just bringing Nunes in the conversation all the time. You know, Nunes, one thing, when I'm when I'm talking about Nunes, I'm talking about him as a starter, I'm talking about him as a, will he ever be a league winner? That's the, the thing that I sit there and say I struggle with and I haven't had, and if there's a Darwin Nunes lover, uh, give me a message on Instagram, like, if you really, really believe I'm wrong and you can count on my points one by one, then please message me and, and we can we can delve into a conversation uh, on a stream in the future. That being said, I only raise uh, the Darwin Nunes thing because he's the biggest conversation out of the attack. Now, Gakpo's joined recently and he's done really well and even I've been a big fan of Gakpo. Diaz is now back from injury and I think before the injury it was our... Arguably our best player, you know, especially at least one of them, even from when he joined the club. So, um, how does the front three line up? And does Nunes or Gakpo get in the front three? Because as Nunes and Gakpo are the new additions, then that means now we're neglecting Jota, who, yes, was injured. Does that now mean we're ne neglecting Luis Diaz, who, who was injured? So, I now raise the question, if you could start your front three, get it in the comments down below. How do you start the front three? And I really want to know what you would go with. Uh, I want to see the general consensus of what people would choose. So, before you choose your start and three, don't look at the comments. Choose your own and then look at the comments. Don't be nervous if yours is different. How I would start my front three. I like the I like the option of changing. I like the I, in fact I don't just like I love the option of bringing someone like Nunes off the bench. I've always said this. I've always stood by that premise. I think he's more than good enough to be an option. I think he's more than good enough to come onto the pit. And if we were a big team who could buy big constantly, then I wouldn't even mind we spend seventy five million on because if we spend seventy five, nobody scores us big crucial goals. I don't care if it's starting or off the bench. So it's just one of those things. I like Nunes as an option. But then as an attacking start and trio, I watched Callum and Hussam, shout out to the brothers, and they had a conversation. Callum said he preferred a front three of Diaz, Jota in the middle, and Salah on the right. And then Hussam went with Jota on the left, Gakpo in the middle, Salah on the right. Hussam doesn't rate Diaz, and I don't understand it, but Callum really rates Jota. And I think we have forgot about Jota in the process of discussing who's going to be in the front three. We think it's Gakpo or Nunes, but then there's Jota. And we do forget Jota had 20 goals in his first full season by January. And we do also forget, I mean, I'm not going to lie, though, I do think he had a goal bonus that season. Like, if you score 20 goals, you get this, because he literally got 21 goals. And he had 20 goals by January, 21 goals by the end of the season. So, no more goal bonuses for you, Diogo. Uh, but we have saw that he's capable of getting 20 goals in the Premier League, especially in a thriving team. Um He's a lethal finisher. I think if anybody, the the rumor, the rumors about Nunes getting the number nine. I think if anyone deserves that number nine, uh, it's Diogo Jota, someone who's established. The only thing about giving Diogo Jota the number nine is it takes away the song. So actually, oh, you can't really because it takes away. Oh, he wears the number twenty, and you need that bit in the tune. But I'm sure we can we can change it to something else, boss. Um, he will take us to victory. What a tune. We haven't sang that for a long time. And that's another reason why Diogo Jota needs to start every game so we can start singing that belter tune. Because don't because it's boss. I, I, I enjoyed it when Nunes would come on last season and we'd be like, Nunes, Nunes, Nunes. It was sick. It was like a boost in the game that was needed. But the Diogo Jota song is like a party atmosphere. It changes the dynamics. Um... So yeah, that, that's where I'm standing in terms of the position on how we should start out our front three. But guys, let's actually analyse it for what it is. Okay, so Salah's not getting any younger, but I think our attack is still very, very good. You know, I don't talk about it enough. And yes, with Salah getting older, I wouldn't mind bringing in a backup right winger. Um, but in terms of an established front three, I think we can make it most certainly work with the options of Nunes, Gakpo and Jota. I think Diaz and Salah are kind of given to, to start, in my opinion, if they're fit, um, in Klopp's eyes. 
So then really it's just them three competing for positions and then it's just who do you want to start out of them three. And I think they could change in alternate games. We've got the Europa League. We'll want to compete in the FA Cup and League Cup. So hopefully we can find a balance where all of them can get game time. Um... But the main thing is options, so this is a good thing, this is a good video, happy video, we finally got there, uh, but it doesn't mean that we should just, oh we've got a good attack so everything else is okay, this is a separate conversation, for instance people thought when I was talking about Nunes, they think I'm saying all of last season was on Nunes, and someone messaged me in the comments saying James that's what you were talking about in this video, but you need to understand context, if you don't understand context then you're dumb, so here's the score, if you think I mean Nunes was at fault for everything last season, then you're wrong. But factually, if he scored more of his goals, we have more of a chance of getting top four. You can use the same logic for Virgil van Dijk. You can use the same logic for these players. But there was one difference that was made after January. It was a system change, and it was a system change that was forced to be made because Gakpo had to play more, and he wouldn't have made sense in the previous system where Salah was so far out wide and Nunes was the one getting all the chances. And that was the only issue. We built a system to adhere to Nunes and his chances. Now, when you've got a striker who can get the chances but can't convert them, that's a problematic system. But when you get a guy like Gakpo who's intelligent and then provides some more of those chances to Salah, then boom, there you go. You start to see more goals. I think Salah still missed a lot of chances last year it's why I'd like to get a backup right winger because I still think his conversion rate could be improved but then I still saw the elevation in the team when we didn't have two like 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 for like players in the same starting 11 so what I'm leading to is I wouldn't mind Nunes coming off the bench but the one thing I don't want to see if he starts is him and Salah starting at the same time um just because I don't think it works for the overall team and I think we try and adhere too much towards them, leading more likely to lose the ball due to their lack of ability technically um, and also the fact that they're both inconsistent finishers. They're both goal scorers but they both have poor conversion rates. So it's about making sure Gakpo gets some of the chances, Diaz gets some of the chances, let's get a goal scorer midfielder and let him chip in with a few. Let's not rely on one man or two men to get all of our goals, because even though Manny and Salah got loads of goals, and then Jota came in and got loads of goals, uh, it's one of those things where we went very, very persistent with Nunes when they tried to make Salah creative and stuff like that, so I'm just trying to be aware of the system. Uh, now, I don't mind if I rattle people, I really, really don't. I only encourage to understand the full context, as then you're only winding yourself up. You're clicking on my video, you're getting me views and getting me revenue. I'm very, very happy, regardless of you disagreeing or agreeing. It's why I tell people to dislike the videos because it improves engagement. Um, but it also lets me know where I stand in, in terms of how you are enjoying the content. So what I'm saying is I don't lose sleep. But what I do also say is, is that you guys seem to lose sleep when I bring up Nunes. So I, I encourage anybody, it, it, even in the comments, let me know if you'd like to come on a show and you'd like to debate me point for point. I'm more than happy to do so. Um, because nobody's been able to give me a significant point and Nunes hasn't showed me good enough performances consistently to say he'll be a league winning striker. That was the premise of the video earlier, so if you still want to get upset and all in your nappies about that, that's a you problem. Either way, do leave a comment also, leave a like or dislike if you enjoyed this video. Um, much love guys, and again, I'm looking forward to the season, and, and I'm looking forward to it because these conversations are now going to dimmer, you know, the FSG conversation, because now the focus will be taken away from that and back onto the football, we can get back onto the pitch problems, um, and then we can discuss this even more depth. And here's the last thing I'll say before I sign off. I pray I'm wrong about Nunes. Let me get that 100% clear. Not reverse psychology, not me trying to mess with you. I, I cannot wait for the day, if it ever comes, for all of you guys to spam my comments. I want to see thousands of them saying, ha ha, James, you're wrong. Ha ha, this age like milk. Ha 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 ha. I want you to get all the clips. I want you to put them all on TikTok. I want you to absolutely take the piss that I would deserve out of me for some of the things I've said about Nunes. But let me remind you of what I've said. I don't think he'll be good enough to be a league winning striker. So until he wins a league, you can't do none of that stuff. That's just one of those things. I said he's not going to be a league winning striker. When we got rid of Mane, I wanted to be the replacement to be someone who's going to now take us from what was second and missing a Champions League to first. It was a smaller gap. But we went with Nunes and we dropped to fifth. We were actually dropping to eighth or ninth. But then when Nunes got dropped, we went back up. And that's because we didn't adhere too much to him. It's not because he's a bad player. It's actually Klopp's fault that we tried to make a system that was too adherent to Nunes. So all I'm simply saying is until that day happens, that's when you can crucify me. But until then, I don't hate Nunes. I don't want the worst for Nunes. I don't have an agenda against Nunes. I tell you what I see. There is no incentive for me to have a go against Nunes. You saw the thing that happened with Mane when I gave him nothing but praise. It went bump, 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 bump. It's my most popular video of all time. I thrive more on positivity 
Look at my most popular fan cams ever on Redmen TV. All of them are after wins. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of you after wins when I'm happy. Because that's when the energy starts to come across. I don't like the negative energy. If I'm just as a motive in happiness, imagine what I'm like when I'm not seeing things that I like to see from the football team. So I bring up Mane because I like to be positive about my players. But I'm not going to be blindly positive, And I will be constructive. And if you misinterpret my misconstructive criticism, my, my constructive criticism on players as, as hate or as, as bad, then maybe we need to reevaluate the, the premise of discussion. And if we don't understand that, if we don't understand what discussion is, then this isn't the channel for you. So on your way out of you, you're never going to tune in again. Smash that like and subscribe. Yeah. Or, or smash a dislike if you didn't enjoy. Guys, thank you for watching. Really enjoy these conversations. And regardless whether we agree or disagree, I love you, mate. And you've got to, we've got a platform here to agree and disagree. That's what it's good about. We don't want it all to be the same. Uh, we all want a common goal, but different ways to get there. And that's the beauty of the platform. But anyway, all the stuff that I said before, and I'll see you later.